What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG. You know, there's been a lot of delivery games in the last couple of years. There's Euro Truck Simulator, where you drive across Europe and deliver different parcels and different items and supplies all across the land. Then there's American Truck Simulator, where you do the same thing. Then there's Death Stranding, where you deliver a baby. Here, we're going to talk about a game that has deliveries in areas so deep, dark, nasty, and muddy that most rednecks probably look at it and go, yeah, yeah probably not. This is going to be an impressions video of my time for this. I was really busy reviewing games, but I wanted to give you guys my impressions of it because they're pretty much solidified at this point. This will be $39.99. It's from Saber Interactive. And it, of course, is SnowRunner. Also, as we go forward through this week, I'd love to know if you like these kind of games. Leave a comment, retweet this, share it, everything you can. You guys know I'll be giving away a copy of this. We'll decide on the podcast this Friday who gets it. Check it out. So what is it? Well, basically, this is a game where you take one of up to 40 different vehicles. You have full customization on those vehicles, all of which actually adjust how they control and handle in these nasty ass areas they go. And you tow and drive and drag and deliver and dig yourself out of four different territories with multiple maps for each one. This really is just you driving around, finding different locations. And there's a lot of exploring that is in this title. It's one of the reasons why I so loved the original. It's just driving around where slow slow is actually fast and where slower is pretty much a stop in this game. There's really only two speeds. And anybody who does these delivery games knows what I'm talking about. When you celebrate single-handedly delivering a cord of wood in this game, halfway across a district that seems to be known for nothing more than mud and mouth harps, and then you finally get there and getting 200 bucks feels like a friggin' fortune. So when you start out the game, you just have one or two vehicles and the entire reasoning for this game is for you to drive around, for you to explore. And as you find different watchtowers, you unlock more parts of the map as well as missions. Driving around can also find you various things like various different vehicles, but as well as trailers. And these trailers allow for you to put supplies on them and deliver those supplies to fulfill a lot of the jobs that you'll find around the game. And where the truck simulator games are more about distance driven and discerning the best possible route for saved money and timeliness and space. Snow Runners and prior to that, Mud Runner is about smaller distances at a much slower pace where every inch has to be meticulously experimented with and explored before going forward. What can look like solid ground in this game evaporates below you instantly and will end up miring your vehicle and you'll either need to just simply recover the vehicle or use the towing system that you have or jump into another vehicle and go there and tow yourself out that's also where this co-op comes into play so there's four player co-op total and you can drive around and you do the deliveries and do the missions together but you can also help each other out especially because a lot of these vehicles whether light or heavy have different elements that they are good at and they can tow you out that kind of thing as well as differentials on some vehicles or all wheel drive on others. And a lot of it is just that meticulous looking over a particular element before you jump into it. You'll see a giant bog and you have to look at this dirty water and think to yourself, okay, can I make it? Should I go to the right? Should I go to the left? Should I go straight through? And a lot of times the idea that you may have turns into the worst idea you could have as you end up finding out you are fender deep in mud and can't continue. And deep water can actually damage the vehicle. It can destroy different parts of it and cause you to have to repair those as well. Now, graphically, this has to be one one of the best deformation engines there are. Think about those old movies you'd see and you see some special effect and now when you see them, you're like, damn, that looks ancient. That's all other game simulations for dirt and mud and snow and rain. It is that good. It has absolutely premium simulation when it comes to the environmentals. Everything from tearing up the grass on some plane somewhere to diving down deep into the mud in some bayou looking location. It feels a great deal like a Red Dead or something like that, where you're consistently coming up over a mountain and looking and going, I want to go over there and see what that location is. And sometimes you have to end up switching vehicles to even get there phenomenal way in which they did that. Now, when it comes to the graphics, it does run fairly well. There's a lot of graphics options, but I will say it's a little bit wishy-washy in particular areas, especially when it comes to the shadows and how they hit the FPS. Luckily, you do have settings like draw distance, which matters a good deal in this game because the draw distance is pushed way out in this title. It's something you'll notice even here in this footage as I'm just driving around. Next thing, of course, we're going to talk about is music. There's not much. There's a little bit that plays in the background, a lot of mouth harp for some strange damn reason. 
it is very sedate. This is a game where you could easily listen to a podcast or listen to other music as it plays. That's not to say that the music that plays isn't good. It's just not really grabby or something that you will notice if you have a tendency to turn it off. It's more ambient and that's fine. Now, when it comes to the sounds, the sounds are great so far. You have different engine sounds. Of course, everything gets damaged. You can hear different elements like the snorkel come on when you drive down into deep water in one of the vehicles that has that. You have all different engine sounds because you actually do have a great number of variables when it comes to the size of the engines for the different vehicles. There is no voice. So moving on from there, you've got your gameplay. So the gameplay starts out with you really just opening up, doing a small tutorial, and then being able to jump to one starting section of each of the lands. The new sections unlock as you continue going on. What your job is to do is to explore. And your vehicle's constantly burning gas. Every single vehicle has different amounts of gas that it burns, depending on how you're gearing it, how you're driving it, and of course, what engine you have in it at any particular time, because you can upgrade. You're just exploring, you're finding items, and you're doing little jobs. You might go to one place and a bridge might be out, and they say, deliver two units of metal from over here and deliver two units of wood from over here. And that requires you to plan out your course and go and do so. And that's what's so cool about this. It is not massive areas, but what matters is it is incredibly varied between two locations and it causes you to really pay attention. Nothing is super quick, but it is incredibly detailed and I love that. The gameplay continues to escalate from there, opening up the new locations. As it does, you also open up new vehicles you can get and you get money for all of your jobs, which allows for you to go into a store and buy stuff. Now, if you want to go to the new locations, you have to go to your garage. You have to pack up your vehicle, just like you're putting it on a cargo container. And then you go to the new area and you grab your vehicle out of it. What this does allow for you to do is if you leave a vehicle in one of your other locations, you can actually sort of quick travel between the two different lands. So you can go from, let's say, Alaska to a Midland without any issues just by pushing a button. You don't have to buy a new vehicle where you are or anything like that, as long as you've taken care of making sure that one's out there in the woods somewhere. Let's talk about control and co-op. The control so far is spot on. Each vehicle, like I said, feels completely different from the others. Independent suspension systems and those upgrades actually make noticeable difference to parts. For example, shocks and tires. If you're driving around and have an issue in the mud and you go upgrade those tires, you will notice a dramatic increase in your ability to move around just by a couple increases or upgrades there. It does have wheel support. I haven't used that, but I have used the gamepad and I have used keyboard and mouse. I like the gamepad a lot better for a game like this, but that'll be up to you. Lastly, a little bit about the co-op. You're able to jump into other people's games, drive around, explore with them, and help them with the various things that they need to do. You can also repair each other's vehicles and fuel up each other's vehicles if somebody runs out of gas. Now, a lot of people probably listen to this going, I still don't really get why you would play this game. I feel that that's fair. Euro Truck Simulator, American Truck Simulator, and a lot of these simulator games are like that, except for maybe Drug Dealer Simulator. We all want to play that at least once, right? But you look at these games and you might think, I just don't get it. There's a Zen state that can happen in these. Turning on that podcast or listening to that music and just sitting back and driving around. Talk to anybody that you know who loves to go for buying out in the woods and they will tell you the same thing. There is something hilariously interesting and almost spiritual in exploring in a vehicle like that. And of course, tearing up nature, which a lot of people don't agree with. But here, hey, no animals, no landscapes were harmed. We'll probably cover it more in the podcast when more people have got a chance to play it prior to this Friday's podcast on Twitch. But so far, it has been nothing but a blast. Haven't had any bugs. Performance has been pretty good. I've had to turn down one or two settings to get it exactly where I want. You just have to really know what you're getting into when you jump into this. Because the first time you see somebody going in this and they're going full out in a vehicle and it's like 12 miles an hour, it can be hard to describe to somebody why that is fun. But you know what? For many of us, it actually is. So I hope you like this short impressions video. Sorry, I didn't get to do a review, but it's been so busy that I just didn't get a chance to do this. But I really wanted to hit on some of the parts of this game that I enjoyed so much because there are a lot of elements to this that speak to me as a person who loves exploration games. And this game pays off in spades for that. It's also very easy to track exactly what's going on. There's never been a time where I've been playing the game and been like, that wasn't fair or this didn't actually work the way I expected. Everything pretty much does. It can be a little disconcerting to get out in the middle of nowhere and not be able to winch yourself to safety. But well, as somebody who's done that in real life, that's pretty much the breaks. 
So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Check out Reddit and Twitter and Facebook. And I would love for you guys to come by Patreon and check it out there. We've got a tremendous group in there. We're doing games and D&D and group get-togethers. And we're streaming constantly different games to each other. It is an absolute blast. It is a great place to somehow be social while you're still isolated. Also, are you interested in games like this or you're not? I'd love to know why and what you think. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.